Welcome back to A Few Dudes, everybody. Another week, another podcast, another two weeks, another podcast. Sorry, I got it wrong. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's the realest podcast in the world. We're really happy to be back. We have an exciting episode planned for you today. We're going to talk about dating. But before we get into that, we are just going to kind of do some house cleaning because we weren't here last week. We were not. It has been a crazy last couple's last couple of weeks i've been fucking partying my ass off i also got sick i'm a little sick so i got that sexy rumble going on be sure to go into the comments and let me know how it makes you wet because uh i love that <laughs> shit um yeah dude um exciting episode before we get into the whole dating we are going to talk about that uh, it's just something that's relevant in our lives right now and it's like so fresh on my brain that um i don't know i'm an introspective person and I like to think deep, and I've come to a lot of realizations, and uh, I'll get into that a little bit more. So that's what we're going to talk about this week. Uh, yeah, be sure to stay tuned because this episode is going to be very love filled. Um, it's going to be great. Yeah, I can, t- I can feel it. Like we both, uh, Wesley's in, been in some encounters recently, so uh, <laughs> that's the best way I can put it. So, Such yeah, a be, sus way yeah, to put it. Yeah, be sure to. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. But. Um, before we get into all that, yeah, we wanted to, uh, we're going to jump into, cue the, the, the tune thing. Carlos's Weekly Nerd News. There you go. Uh, I'm all sick, so I'm all nerd <laughs> news. <laughs> yeah, we thought we, it'd be a better idea to get this out of the way first. Not out of the way, because it's not like something like just like, oh, this is, yeah, but. No, we want to open up with this, because we have a lot of other stuff to talk about, but we want to do our weekly shit, so yeah, we're going to get that out of the way first. Uh, yeah, so I feel like we haven't talked about this, like, at all, even though it, like, happened weeks ago, like, probably a month ago now. Did you finish Obi-Wan? Nope. You can't. I got bored, bro. Fair enough. It, I, it Fair lost enough. my interest because just the writing and, yeah, I, yeah, I just kind of blew it off. Okay, well. I got to the second to last episode, though, I'm pretty sure. So, I would say to finish it, because the final episode made the whole show worth it for me. Really? Definitely, yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, So, finish that when you can. And then, also, yesterday, me and Crystal watched uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. It's the, th- the fourth Thor movie. Pretty fucking cool. Just came out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christian Bale, God tier. Like, him as the yeah. villain. Really fucking cool. I recommend that movie to anybody. If you guys want to just go to the movies and have a good time... That's a good movie to go and have a good time. It's just a very like fun movie, and it's Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Taika Waititi as the director. Like both of them paired like god tier. Like you've seen Ragnarok, right? Yeah. If you like that, then you'll like this. Definitely good. I don't think it's as good as Ragnarok because Ragnarok was like so fucking good. Yeah. But this one, it's a, it's not like terrible <laughs> compared to it, but it's not as good compared to it for sure. But I definitely recommend it if you guys haven't got a chance to watch that by the time this episodes came out. Um, also. They dropped a release trailer, well, like a teaser trailer for, well, a cinematic trailer for uh, the new God of War. Did you get a chance to watch that? I did watch that. Pretty fucking sick. It's going to be sick. Yeah. I I haven't played through the first one. I need to. (coughs) Oh, God. Uh, I definitely need to play through the first one uh, before that comes out. So thank God that one's still coming out this year, which is going to be sick. What I will say, because I I did start playing it, and it was my first playthrough, and... So the hardest difficulty, it doesn't let you change it. Like mm-hmm. you, you're stuck with it, mm-hmm. and hard as hell. Like I like hard games. That's yeah. like my thing. Like Dark Souls, fucking Sekiro, which is like made by the same people. It's really fucking mm-hmm. difficult, and I like to just play games on the hardest difficulty because I I think it's fun. But this is different, bro. This is probably like the hardest shit? game I've ever played. Damn. And like that's my shit. Yeah, fuck, dude. It is like next level. Like you get hit. And you're, like, one shot already, and it's just, like, yeah. it's really fucking hard. But it is so incredibly satisfying when you're just, like, fucking them up and you're just dodging every attack because you have to on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. So if you're down for the challenge, do it. But if not, the second to last difficulty, I forgot what it's called, um, is also the move. Sick. Yeah, so that came out, and I definitely have to touch on that first game. I need, I need to play it. Um, and then also... Uh, the skate trailer finally came out. <laughs> Looks fucking amazing. <coughs> Damn, what's he saying? Sorry, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get it out. Uh, so the yeah, skate four trailer came out. Looks fucking amazing. I know it was like an alpha, pretty much like showing off what they're still doing in the pre-alpha. Yeah, if you guys are gamers and you haven't seen it, you should watch it because it just 
I mean, everybody fucking played skate growing yeah, up. Like and even uh, people who don't skate played skate because it's such a good game. Yeah, like it's just uh, yeah. So this game, it looks like it's still sticking to like its roots of like the same mechanics that the joystick thing. Like I'm sure they'll probably have like a simulator mode where you like have to like like left means left foot, right means right foot type shit. Like I'm sure they'll they'll do some weird shit, kind of like Skater XL or skate. Yeah. Uh, type shit like grind. I think I forgot what it's called grind or something like that. Yeah, there's Skater XL and uh, yeah, I forgot the name of the other Session. one. Session. Session. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll probably have a different like control set just for people who want to play like that kind of simulator style. But it looks fucking amazing. There's gonna be like create your own map type shit. I'm sure, there's probably gonna be some crazy multiplayer modes like I don't know, King of the Hill, all this kind of shit. Like it's gonna be. I'm excited for it. For Me sure. too. I'm excited for it also. Just nostalgia, um, just for nostalgia's sake. Oh, too. yeah. No, for sure. And then also today, as at, at the time of recording it, no, yesterday, at the time of recording this. So what's today? The 10th? 11th? No, it's later than that, 12th. dude. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> so yesterday, July 11th, I'm sure you guys have all seen it, uh, the Deep Space Web Telescope. Like, finally, they released their first pictures. And holy fuck, it looks so crazy. It's really? so amazing. Like... And have you seen, like, the video, like, how it could go... Have you seen the pictures? No. Oh, you fucker. Dude, it's crazy. So, like, they sent this telescope months ago out into space. So, obviously, we have the Hubble telescope, right? Yeah. Which has taken, like, pictures of the universe and the galaxies and all that shit that we've never seen like that before. Well, this telescope was sent out months ago, and um, it was, like, uh, it's out past, like, a million miles. Yeah, a million miles already and it was able to take like such beautiful pictures and the way they compared it was the pictures that they released if you held your hand up to the sky with the grain of sand that is what the picture is showing like in comparison to the rest of the sky so yeah no pretty nuts like that's fucking weird and then within that picture like the pictures they released there's hundreds if not thousands of galaxies that are like within view but then there's also little specks in the back which are also other galaxies and other like it's just fucked. It just goes yeah, and goes Yeah, it's so and crazy. And it just shows how little we are, but also it's, like, oddly really beautiful, like, on how we're able to, like, make something that, like, scientifically, like, advanced by just being humans, like, with this thing up here, you know, that brain of ours, like, and that just shows, like, what being, like, united and, like, thousands of people working together can do. Like, yeah, it's, it's fucking nuts. But if you guys haven't seen those pictures, I'm sure you guys have. Go look at them. It's... Maybe it's not as cool as maybe, like, others, like... I might need to... I'll throw some up on the screen for my video watchers. Mm -hmm. Shout out to video watchers. Love you guys. And they had, like, comparisons showing older pictures from the Hubble telescope compared to the Webb telescope. And, dude, it's night and day. Like, it's crazy. Seeing what now we can see compared to, like, what we sent out all those years ago when we sent out the Hubble telescope. But, yeah, I think that was pretty much it for my my nerd news i love that you were just talking about how that brain of ours and how crazy it's just crazy that how much humans have achieved yeah and i mean sometimes it fucks us over that brain of ours but it causes a lot of goods too Mm -hmm. um speaking of that brain of ours i'm gonna do my mental health check for everybody because i'll be honest life for me is really really good right now I am super thankful at this time in my life. I've been working, I've been partying, spending good time, good times with good people. And um, yeah, so I just want to encourage you guys to just, yeah, try to make new friends and fucking go out and experience things and do things you care about. Because like a year ago, I was fucking in the dumps. I hated my life. I hated everything about it. And just trying to just take baby steps to just try and get more out of your life it makes such a big difference. And it's not, it's not that hard. Like you just do little things here and there, focus on things that you care about, spend time with people that you love and yeah, life turns around quick. It can, it will get better for anybody who's in the dumps. I promise you it will get better. Nothing is final. You got this dude. I also did want to touch on that. Because I think what you bring up was really important. So right now that life's good for you, you've obviously, like, from the beginning of the podcast, we've talked about, like, mental health and how we're trying to improve ourselves and also, like, improve how we, like, operate on a daily basis. And, like, you putting in that work has gotten you to, like, this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, also, like, I mean, obviously, like, time does heal everything and time heals all. 
but if you put in the work to do so for yourself, it'll just pay off in greater amounts. So, and like, we're both, I mean, pretty much living proof. Like if you, yeah, like you I don't want to sit around and be like, Oh, it's going to get better. Like it will get better. But if you try and make yourself better by cleaning the dishes, by vacuuming your floor, or putting away your clothes or going outside for 30 minutes, just doing those things, those little steps lead to like greater heights. So. Yeah. You go out on a walk and then next thing you know, a few weeks later, after a couple walks, it's a run. And then a few weeks after that, it's the gym. And then it's just like this snowball effect. And it starts with those baby steps, like I was saying. So, yeah, just, uh, I don't know. Have faith in yourself that you can do better and you will do better. Mm -hmm. You will. You have to. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that gives you guys a little bit of inspiration. Um, so that kind of leads us it. into the Let's topic. This week we're going to talk about relationships. Um... It is, is one of those things that um, I wrote. I wrote out a whole bunch of topics. I have them here. I want to talk about it. Um, and it, the the basis of kind of the realizations I've been having is. Yeah, I was gonna say go through the context a little bit. Yeah. Do is should you love yourself or should you love someone else or love yourself? And I think loving someone else is so easy. Like, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Well, it, when it hits you, it just fucking boom. It's so easy to just be like, whoa, you know, and get taken away by it. Slipped Whereas under your feet, yeah. Loving yourself is not like that. It's a, it's a battle. It's a practice as well, yeah. But I think I don't think you can love someone else without – it's a cliche. It's a cliche to, you know, people say it all the time. Work on yourself. Do your own thing. You do you, king, or you do you, queen, whatever it is. And it is a cliche, but it's a cliche because there's so much truth to it. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because when you're just doing it, it's like, or before you've kind of started working on yourself and then you kind of see things come to fruition a little bit. Oh, dude, Carlos, Carlos is on a mission. Hey, you want to grab me a water bottle, too? We don't have any right now. Oh, fuck. All right. No, nah, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. All right. Um, anyways, what I was talking about. Um. It's weird. It's kind of like one of those things. It's like what I was talking about with the mental health check, too, where once it's so hard and weird to explain, but essentially once you get it, you get it, you know, like you see it the first time and you're like, damn, there is truth to that truth to just like doing your own thing and letting things come to you, um, which kind of brings me in to the first topic that I have written down here which is a lot of the times we sit around and I've done this and I'm like one day the one will show up you know and everything will be great whereas I mean th that could happen it does happen mm -hmm. it's a uh, few and far between but it does happen in reality most of the relationships you get into are not going to last forever that's just how it goes especially in my experience but it's hard to just like sit back and expect things to come to you without having to like put in a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. So m the first piece of advice that I've found for myself that I want to share with everybody is instead of trying to wait for the one, become the one for someone else. So like instead of yeah, sitting around, you just work on yourself and you become the best version of yourself and you do things you care about, things that you love. And next thing you know, that's going to attract somebody because it's just a genuine thing. People love genuine interactions with people and seeing somebody with drive and a little bit of ambition to like make things better in their life. I think that's the most attractive quality that anybody can have, dude or girl or yeah. female, whatever. That drive in somebody is like hot. Like, I mean, sure they can have Super the nice sass or whatever, whatever. But like, if they're going for something that like that they're like persevering for and they're like putting their all into it, like that shit's hot. Like, hard work is hot. I'll tell you right now, I've been with girls that have booty for days, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's about it sometimes. And that shit is not that. That ain't it. Once you realize that it's really kind of a shallow thing, and you were just physically attracted to them, and that mm -hmm. was about it. It just fades. It does. And this has happened to me many, many, many times in my life. But, yeah, the kind of the reason why I um, 
wanted to talk about this because I got reunited with somebody and I can see so much drive in her and she like just wants to better herself and build a life that she wants to live. And that is just so hot. Yeah. That is so hot. I told her, I was like, that's the fucking hottest thing about you. Yeah, when when they have plans and they're actively working towards it, like there's nothing more that you can like want from a person, honestly. Like yeah. even if they don't like succeed in those plans, the fact that they tried though, like that's like that's the bread and butter right there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure. Trying something is better than doing nothing every yeah. single time. Every single time. Yeah. It pretty much doesn't matter what it is. There are a few things, but for the most part, doing something is better than nothing. Um, so I kind of want to, after talking about kind of that idea of becoming the one rather than waiting for the one, the I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you a question about like when you first met Crystal mm -hmm. and like, were you ready for it? Did you feel like you were ready for it? Was it something you were looking for or was it just like, like it just, I think it just happened for you, didn't it? Yeah, so, like, obviously, this is my first girlfriend. We all know that. But before, I was constantly told, like, oh, why don't you have a girlfriend? Where's your lady at? Uh, I get that shit all puss? the time. Uh, any, any of that, like, simple shit, like, oh, are you, are, you, are you trying to slay that pussy or whatever? Like, all that kind of, like, toxic shit. Um, but I was just told, like, oh, I'm in the workshop right now, man. I'm just working. I'm working. And, like, uh, not, like, I was always just working on myself. So once I felt ready and I was, like, I would look in the mirror and I was, like, you know what? You're the fucking man. Like, like even there was times where I'd, I'd hype up myself in the mirror, and it actually works. Like, oh, it's fuck talking yeah, it sense into yourself. And, um, yeah, so, like, once it came time, like, this, it was a year ago now. Uh, I mean, it was, yeah, the summer, and, like, you know, I was feeling good. I just moved into this place. Like, I had, every, like, a lot of good things going for me. Like, I was, I was feeling good. Like, I was happy about myself, happy where I was. Um, and then, yeah, like, I didn't expect... To meet her, I, I, w I, don't, I wouldn't say I was prepared, but I also wasn't surprised because I felt this sense of confidence that I hadn't really felt ever. Mm -hmm. And I think that confidence rubbed off in like the really like right way to where then I met her and now I've been with her for a year. So I don't think it's something as much as like uh, trying to prepare for a girlfriend ever, but I was just preparing myself for life in general. And I think that itself, um, being in the workshop, helped with everything else that came it's gonna on top build your confidence yeah. you're gonna feel better about yourself and yeah. that is attractive yeah and i wasn't building myself for anybody else i was just building myself for, for me. you like, that's the way were, you got to do yeah, it people were like oh why, why are you like going to san fran by yourself oh because i fucking want to it sounds it sounds fun so fuck it why the fuck not go to san fran like just simple things like that doing things for yourself uh just helps you way more in the long run than i think people really like tend to like see yeah, so. you gotta you gotta treat yourself, bro. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're your own king. You got you mm -hmm. better than anybody else. You gotta hold down your own castle. Like even your mama, your pops, it don't matter. You are there for you every single day, and they will be there for you. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just it's not the same. You gotta Except treat my yourself. Dad, yeah. <laughs> <I'm> kidding, <okay. laughs> well, sorry, the buddy that don't <laughs> that don't apply to you. Uh, Papa Carlos has <laughs> left the building. <laughs> Or has left the building for a long time now. But. Yeah, he left the... He's despawned. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> well, rip. But no, I do get what you're saying, though. Like, <coughs> fuck. Even the homies. It can be the homies. Like, I know the homies got my back. But Easy, yeah. at the end of the day, <coughs> like, if I'm going to make a choice, I'm going to make that choice. For yourself. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you got to do it. You can't can't be focusing on everybody else's uh, opinions and all that because like I said at the end of the day you got you better than anyone else so that does bring me to asking you do you think you were prepared to meet this lady you know this I've been chica. I've been thinking about it a lot and I don't I don't really know where I stand <laughs> completely on it because <clears throat> I do feel good. I feel good about myself, and I feel like I'm ready for anything. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's been a long time for me is the thing. Like, I got out of a nasty relationship, and I was like, fuck that, dude. I Like, I have no – I pretty much – it put a bad taste in my mouth. I had no desire to right. really be with anybody. Yeah. I mean, I was still talking to girls, getting girls' numbers, and, like, chatting with them. But, like, but you weren't trying to, like – yeah, none of them were really life. it, <clears throat> and I'm I'm bad about this. I I think some people can probably relate to this, where like I overthink and I get ahead of myself. 
when I'm talking to a girl or whatever. And this, I'm trying so, so hard to not do that right now because it's just not healthy and it's unrealistic to make all those assumptions. It's one of the points I'm going to get into a little bit later because making assumptions, <clears throat> it's never, it's almost never going to live up to that, you know? So you have to just have no assumptions and go into it just basically it's being present yeah you have to be present and you have to be there because if you're not there and you're like off in la la land like oh my god she's so amazing we could do we could do anything it's like they're gonna feel that and you just have to be there with them and be yourself um it's so important yeah that reminds me from a scene uh it's called 500 days of summer is the movie Mm. and um there's this whole scene where it's the screen's cut in half and it says reality expectations. And he's going to like this party, right? With this girl that he's liked for the longest time. And the whole reality part, he's like hugging her. And like he goes to like say hi to everybody, but everybody's kind of like eh about him or whatever. And he's just standing there drinking by himself in the corner, just chilling. And then she shows like a ring that she has on her finger. <coughs> she got proposed to. <coughs> Fuck, I choked on her uh, fry. <laughs> um, but in the whole expectations Not the only thing part, he's going to be choking on. You just wait. <laughs> nah, just play it. <laughs> and, um, Get it out. No. And uh, in the whole expectations part, he walks up to her. He gives her a kiss. She kisses him back. She introduces him to everybody. They're drinking together. And then they end up sleeping together by the end of the night. But these two are playing just both side to side at the same time, real time. And it's that that reminded me of that because that is like a common thing that people so obviously crazy. go through. Like I really yeah. want to watch that. We've talked about that a little bit on the really podcast in the past. Really good movie. <clears throat> um, and yeah, that leads perfectly into this next point that I want to talk about is that you have these expectations and it's almost <laughs> never going to live up to it. So you just have to be in the moment and let it all just progress. And a huge part of that is that it's not going to work out a lot of the times. And so you can't take things personally because like I said earlier, I talked about this a little bit, how when, uh, when you're going to fall in love, it's just like, boom, it's easy. As soon as you're like, Oh, yep. <coughs> like he's cool. She's cool. Whatever mm-hmm. floats your boat. And it just, boom, takes over. And then, yeah, that's when you start to make these assumptions. And then I've had it. I mean, everybody's had it where it doesn't work out and you take things personally and it feels shitty, but it's so (laughs) important to realize that love is kind of like the first easy part, whereas what is really important to building a lasting relationship that I've found is compatibility. That is what is going to lead to something that is more than just like a few months where you're like crazy in love and then all of a sudden the reality hits you and you're like it's that honeymoon phase me and this person are not supposed to be together <laughs> like this is not right that has happened to me and it's a hard it's a hard thing <clears throat> to expect but compatibility like i said is <clears throat> it's going to lead you to a long lasting thing you need to be looking for do you guys have <clears throat> similar interests similar hobbies similar ideals do you guys want the same things out of life and what <clears throat> Does that look like for each other? And is that something that is going to last between you? And I just had this realization, and I think it's so powerful. I'd never really thought about that before. I think after not (laughs) pursuing... Carlos is dying. I'm fucking choking on pieces of garlic right now. You need a drink, buddy? (laughs) No, I'm good. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Back to what I was saying. I kind of lost my train of thought, but... um, compatibility after not being in a relationship for so long and focusing on myself i realized that it is so important that you and the other person you're talking to if you're looking for something long term because i mean we're fucking 21 years old a lot of the times people aren't yeah for sure but to have similar interests and just to be down to do things together because of those similar interests fucking huge it Mm -hmm. is so big and i don't think people talk about this very often i haven't really heard about it much i did actually i was inspired by this video that i watched and um he did talk about it a little bit but i realized when he was talking about it how big it really is it's a fucking big deal yeah when you were talking about um like how how like expectations can ruin things for you oh my god it's something i'm gonna cry (coughs) uh carlos are you are you okay (coughs) um I thought I was a sick one. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, seriously. Uh, there's like a piece of garlic just there. I can feel it. Here, you need me to get it for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it was like uh, when you were talking about how 
you can um oh like you you take it personally right like if a girl just doesn't reciprocate the same feelings for you we've all pretty much taken it personally yep um yeah like <clears throat> i think a really important part about that is not blaming yourself because it's so easy to blame yourself for everything yep but also <clears throat> also um <clears throat> for me when it happened something like that similar <laughs> happened i blame myself like entirely and like i took myself out of the whole dating and love game for fucking for a while it was probably like five or six years and like i just didn't want anything to do with anybody because i was like oh it was all my fault or whatever and like all that kind of shit and it took me like way longer than it needed to to uh, come to like the realization that it wasn't actually my fault at all and um it was just things just didn't pan out it yep. was, it's literally just that simple it's a blessing in yeah. a way because <clears throat> it was never gonna work out oh no fuck no oh hell no uh <laughs> Looking back at it, thank God it didn't. Uh, I would have been fucked. Uh, but probably, like, literally fucked. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just the way, like, those things go, though, like, I think it's important for you guys to know, like, uh, I'm sure some of you guys have probably been in that same boat. Maybe you guys are in that boat right now. But be sure to not blame yourself for things that you don't have control of, like like love. Like, something like love, science can't quantify. Like, it's not something that you can just pinpoint and be like, oh, that's love, like, it's just something you feel and you kind of just know. Like, it's not anything that, like, you could be like, oh, it's a chemical reaction and all this bullshit or whatever. Like, sure, I used to think that way, but when it happens to you, you just can't explain it. Like, it's just something, like, it's that you different. just feel. It's, if it's, it's not there, it's not there. Like, it's you can't so confusing. It. Yeah. You can't force it. it and <clears throat> that's that's what I'm saying, bro. Just boom. Yeah. It's like a flip of a switch in your brain it and it really just is. goes right off. Night and day, like, the day before I met Crystal, I would have been like, nah like like fuck girls all that shit next day after meeting her i was like oh my god i love this girl like that <laughs> ass yeah that's crazy and, and that's just the way it goes though like you it can does. be a really different person just right when it happens or maybe it might be gradual for some people but i mean clearly for would you say it was like a slip like a switch for you well no there i don't go, yeah. i don't think i'm in love with this girl but <clears throat> i've you know i've experienced it in the past plenty of times like it's actually funny that you're talking about the last girl that you were interested in uh, way back in the day. Yeah. Um, that you would have been fucked because the girl, the nasty relationship that yeah, I got. I saw that. I you saw, saw this? I saw that. The nasty relationship <laughs> that I got out of, she just had a fucking kid. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that and I, I looked and I was like, my boy dodged a fucking bullet, dude. I did Holy dodge a bullet. Shit. I mean, good for her. You yeah. Know, if they're I'm happy, happy, happy her. yeah. But I got you, no beef with her. Yeah. But I. You're not down for it. It sounds fucked up. <clears throat> I am so glad that's not my kid. No, that, it that's fucking could have been. Yeah. But, like, I mean, if they, I mean, we didn't say their names, but if they get buttered, then that's their problem type shit. Like, it's, I don't, it's what, what you want is what you want. What they want is what they want. Like, you know, I can't have same, a, yeah. I, I can't have a kid right now, dude. I got <clears throat> too much. I'm trying to fucking yeah. build a life for myself. Exactly. I want to be at the place where, like, I <clears throat> am secure so that I can give that kid a great life. Yeah. I mean, Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. Shit happens, but uh, yeah, no. But I also not for me. Yeah, I also did quickly want to since we were talking about exes or like, uh, you know, ex flings, whatever the fuck. Cause yeah. Mine wasn't actually a girlfriend. Um, it's also important to not hate her, right? Because you don't hate like you don't hate her. I I don't hate what happened to me. Like I'm actually kind of thankful for what happened to me because me I too. am who I me am too. now. And like I think um I think it's so quick for guys, especially especially when you're immature or like really young. It's so easy to blame them for everything and then also later in the road you're gonna blame yourself but i think it's important to just be okay with that's their choice it didn't work out now i just gotta do me like that type of shit like I'd yeah it's hard to get there it but is. yeah <laughs> once you do it just it unlocks like a door so that, much relief yeah, yeah. and you just feel this like okay like i got i learned a lot yeah like that was fucked up and it was shitty but now i'm a better person and i'll tell you right now after that relationship bro I will never just like sit there and be and let this girl fucking degrade me because exactly, dude. I yeah. realize that I have to fucking stand up for yourself. You have yeah, to stand up you for have yourself. To, yeah, it's important to like make sure to like set those boundaries to where I'm gonna do me. You can't be mad at me for doing what I want, and like also respect me for who I am. Type shit. Like, it comes you, back. Yeah, you can't let them just kick you around and be like, oh, you can't do this because you're supposed to be with me, or you can't hang out with them because you have to be hanging out with me. Like none of that. Like. You have to have your space. They have to have their space. 
you have your fun, they have their fun type that shit. That control yeah. type of aspect that happens in a lot of relationships, and it tears relationships apart. It, it's unhealthy as fuck, yeah. And you see it all the time. Like, all I know hella dudes at work, <clears throat> older guys that have families, kids, wives, all that shit. They are just like, in a way, they're almost like <clears throat> slaves to their partner, and I just... Yeah. I couldn't do it, bro. I couldn't. I, do I would it. hate waking up every day knowing that, like, all right, got to work while my wife does nothing. So they're like, you I know? yeah, true. They have to have some motivation, and it's different when they're like at home <clears throat> taking care of the kids. Like, you that, know, yeah. they gotta they yeah. gotta do that. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say I'm not gonna fucking support my family and do everything I can for them when that comes. But I am saying that right now, I ain't ready for that shit. I don't think any. Yeah, that's me too, brother. Fuck that. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, thank you. <laughs> It comes Thank back you. to that compatibility thing too. Yeah, like, yeah. she wanted babies. That last trick, I know she wanted babies. She got one. She got <laughs> one. <laughs> Would you look at that? Yeah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just glad that that didn't work out because we wouldn't have been compatible. No way. And I mean, I think, we were not in any way, really. Yeah. And one thing that I did when you talked about that, I thought about like, like you know how people always say like opposites attract. I don't like uh, scientifically. Yeah, of course. But like, I think when it comes to love. You can't, it, it's, that's not the way it works. Like, especially right now with us being so young and our, you know, doors being wide open for anything we want to do in life. Like, I don't think that's the right way to look at it at all. Or like, that's the right thing to like, you know, just justify or come down to as like a conclusion. Cause clearly no, like I, I love that Crystal and I were both nerds. So we both like watching Marvel movies. We'll fucking go outside and play like Pokemon go and just all this random nerd shit. But we're both, we both like that. And like, you guys have some compatibility yeah, with each I, other. Yeah, you guys, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't know. It makes me wonder, like, why that even is like a saying. Because if you guys both like doing exact opposite things, and how are you guys going to like find that common ground and doing things that you guys could both enjoy, you know? The thing about the opposites attract thing is that the opposite of you <clears throat> is, it's fun and it's exciting and it's different and yeah. it makes you want it. I've had, I think a lot of people who have been in relationships in the past have had that opposites attract thing. And yeah, it just is exciting and it's like thrilling. But when it comes down to like the compatibility isn't yeah, there. Yeah. Like I think for first for first meeting, to, like it's, this sounds fucked and like very like, you know, low of me to say. But like if you're just trying to smash or whatever, I think that could apply because like, you know, you're say you're some jock dude and you see this cute little nerd girl just chilling you're going to think that's hot, right? So you're going to go. I've been there. And it's an opposite of track type deal, right? And, like, that's an opposite. But then you guys can just, you know, fucking be done with. But I think when it comes down to, like, a relationship, that's not realistic at all. Like, you have to, like, have certain things you guys both enjoy, similar, like, you know, beliefs and uh, aspirations and whatnot. like Goals and whatnot. And yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think... Yeah, the opposites track thing is a slippery slope, but mm-hmm. goddamn, it is fun sometimes. I won't lie. Fair enough, fair enough. And yeah, it comes back to that honeymoon phase thing too, where it's like, at first it's just like, wow, this is so fun, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, wait. Me, Earth kind of settles down, yeah. Me and this person, uh, this, this, this ain't work. right. Yeah. Like, I thought this was cool, and now I'm like, yeah, no, this ain't it. I, got, I gotta go. Exactly, yeah. It happens, it does happen. It's, it's just that trial and error thing that is such a huge part of relationships you got to put yourself out there and you got to try different things and see what works for you and what doesn't and that's what i've been kind of doing um i am i'm sitting here like here you want to unlock your phone oh yeah i'm sitting here talking like i know all of this i don't but i don't even I, none of us do you know but i'm trying to yeah. figure it out and that's what life is yeah. i'm trying to figure it out that's that's all i'm doing i have a lot of things i need to work on i think i um luckily with this girl that i've been talking to lately her and i um we just get along we've known each other for a really long time and so we're comfortable around each other and we can just pretty much talk about anything which is huge but there's also parts of me that like while i'm with her or not while i'm with her because while i'm with her you know i'm trying to be present or whatever but after the fact i do see these things and i'm like i still have a lot of work to do Everybody does. Yeah. I have so much work yeah. to do. And that is why I have I wrote all this down. I wrote all of it out because it's, uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't have it all figured out. I don't want to make it seem like that. But uh, I am trying. I'm trying to figure it out. And I think everybody needs to do that. So one thing that uh, that brought me back to was 
I always was so caught up, and I know we preach it, but there's also this different side of the coin, right? So we preach on working on yourself, you know, do your thing or whatever, and, like, you know, things will pan out. But also, what I've noticed so heavily that I always just disregarded was you can grow so much also with somebody else. You can. So, and you when it's somebody that, that also wants to grow, the, the, the sky is the limit, like, like and beyond, like, type shit. Like, you can you can continue to go with each other and I'm guaranteeing right now, like, you know, if things, you know, start like work out with you and, uh, said girl, I think, uh, you can like, like you'll, you'll find yourself learning more about you than you didn't before, like in a different way, because when you're learning things by yourself, you learn about yourself in like a completely different way as well. But when with your, when you're with somebody, you'll also find, different ways that you are with somebody else if that makes any sense it was it's kind of hard to put it in words but yeah it's snaps yeah, for yeah, that yeah. bro that is learn. on yeah. the yeah. money yeah because you can focus on yourself and then the second you get put with someone <clears throat> or i mean i say it like you get put with someone but I mean, that's kind of how it feels sometimes like it just happens you universe you just, just says i have this dropped yeah. right in your lap <laughs> yeah. and then yeah you that's what's been happening to me is that i've just been really noticing myself and the way that I interact with girls and things that I need to work on and things that I'm doing well too because I have some aspects that like I'm proud of like I I guess an example would be like we're together and she has all these questions about her car and like things like that and I have the answers and I'm like she's like this needs to be changed and whatever and I'm like yeah I, I can figure it out you know and girls like that the girls like that it's almost like a manly sort of thing, I it guess. It is, though. I mean, but that, it sounds like cliche, but that is how it is. Like, it's like oh, uh, even something as simple as, oh, I need air in my tires. You put air in the tires, like, oh. Or, oh, I need my oil changed. You change the oil, oh. Like, oh, I, this broke. Can you fix it? You fix it. And they're like, oh, damn. Like Girls like that shit. Yeah. It sounds like barbaric and, like, you know, prehistoric type shit. Like, oh, well, the it is. doing the work. But... It kind of runs in our blood a little bit. Yeah, like, it's an yeah. evolutionary thing where yeah. it's like women and men evolved together as men being the provider. I mean, this is a relatively new concept, like <clears throat> pre like agricultural kind of age. Men go hunt, women go get berry, take care of child. Like, yeah, well, you know? the thing was back in the day, it yeah. was super 50 50. It was like women <laughs> held a lot of the wealth. Whereas in our current um, society, it's like women can absolutely build wealth and um, value as a person, but it sounds this is a little misogynistic, but it, it has some truth to it that women are also born with a little bit of that value. Some men are too. You know what though? I so this brings me to something I was talking with my girlfriend about. So you know, current comp, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So. She's bad as fuck, right? Super fucking and, hot. And so me and Chris were talking about this because she showed me like a video of, you know, David Dobrik fucking around with his squad or whatever. And I was like, dude, she's so hot. And I was like, and they were showing, they were like, the video was her bank statement and just seeing M's like every month just getting M's. Right. And I was like, okay. I was like, I was like, what's crazy though is she was born with those genes to then allow her to like make that money. I was like, but at the same time. She had to build her way, build relationships, build connections, get her way there to where she can have her name in the spotlight. Yep. And then become like an OnlyFans god type shit. Yep. But those genes inherently helped her though. Like like her having See, that like look, that body, everything, that helps her. But she also had a grind. That's to exactly get there. what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Girls are born with a little bit of that value. And some dudes are too. Some dudes fucking grow up, hit puberty, and next thing you know, complete fucking stud. Model All the ladies shit, love them. Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing happens with girls. It goes both ways. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you have to put in work and build value as a individual. <clears throat> regardless, really. Yeah. Yeah, for whether sure. you're boy, girl, you could be like whatever the hottest motherfucker, but you could be living in goddamn buttfuck called Wada, right? But <laughs> but if you put the work in, you got your name out there, then you got the eyes to watch you, you got the eyes to see you, and you could do whatever you'd like with that, you know, attention and that. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. Um, um, I kind of want to go back into the compatibility thing here just for a second because I skipped over a point that I do want to touch on. Yeah, and go crazy. It's about 
you know, <laughs> finding similar values, interests, things that you both care about? Do you guys have similar drive? You guys both want more out of your life or want similar things out of your life? And um, it's hard because you can't just like jump into something and just like bombard them. Like, how many kids do you want? What are you doing with your life? How, what is, how does this work? What are your <laughs> views on this? You can't do that. It's like this <laughs> natural progression and you kind of have to go through the motions and figure it out slowly. So for anybody who's like taking this advice to heart, I don't want you to try and go find someone and then just like bombard them with all these questions about. Are you taking cold showers, bitch? I'm just, <laughs> like all that kind of shit. Like, yeah. Oh, you know me and my I, cold I, showers, I do, bro. I do get what you're saying though. Yeah, it has, it happens not like, it happens, you can't force it. Yeah, it happens so naturally. Like, when you're... I don't know. I'm going to say it, it sounds cheesy as fuck, but when you're in love, things just happen in a way that, like, like it just melts together. It's like... I don't know. Imagine, like, an ice cube, right, hitting, like, a really fucking hot grill, right? And it just starts melting, right? That That's... In my, in my brain, for some reason, that's what popped up. But that is the way I can explain it. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. help, but it just... It melts... And it just it just works. That's just how it works. Like it just you can't force things like that. It just works like that. Yep. And it can go both ways. One second mm -hmm. it could be great or one girl, you know, it might be like, Wow, she's fucking cool. We're like doing good things together. And then another girl, it could be like, Okay, here's a red flag. I don't know how I feel about mm -hmm. this. And it's like, yeah, it's important to just let yourself find that naturally instead of it's it's honestly I think it's the hardest part about dating because sometimes you get those rose tinted glasses and you just are like Love so infatuated with them that you look past things and then it bites you in the ass later. Dude, you really need to watch 500 Days of Summer because that's another big point that they have in that movie to where things happen and he's looking back at them. And he's realizing a bunch of red flags that happened, but he had these rose tinted glasses that just blocked all of that shit out because he was just so in love and he was so desperate for this girl. And that's just like, and it's just, it's so realistic though. Like, I, and I don't know, it sounds like almost fantasy like, but it's so realistic. Like, we've all done never, it. Yeah. Even, most I might even still be doing it, but. That's that's the way love works though. Like, you can't, it's never perfect. Like, things are going to happen, things True. are going to go wrong. But it's just the matter of working through those things together. And that's what makes, I think, a relationship a relationship. Yeah. And the whole compatibility thing goes both ways. Like you might you might be on the other end of that where oh, like yeah, for sure. You like somebody can be with you. Like I've had this where like I'm interested in a girl and like she's interested in me and we're talking and then things kind of start to fade away. I can tell she's not that interested. Or I've also been in relationships where like a girl is super in love with me like wants me to be her boyfriend 100% and I just am like you didn't feel it I'm sorry but like I had to break that girl's heart I was like I I can't do this I'm sorry it's just not right for me yeah and you, it's important that's that standing up for yourself you have to know what you want and just like you not taking it personally if somebody else doesn't like you you can't take it personally if you don't like them that's nothing wrong with you that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes it goes yeah. both ways it really does, like, and also, there's a lot of guys out there that are also fucking creeps. True. So, so you guys also give everybody else a bad name, and I'm sure there might be some ladies listening to this who are like, okay, but what about us? Here's your guys' part. There's a lot of fucking weird guys out there. There are. So, Dudes are creeps. Yeah, got, and a lot of them fucking scheme in so many ways. They'll, they'll fucking back, like, they'll backstab the shit out of you, and... I mean, obviously, we can't talk in, like, experience with that because we're not those kind of guys. But there's a lot of fucked up guys out there. Well, they'll, they'll be like, oh, she texted me. I'll wait 10 minutes to respond. Like, all that kind of shit, you know? But that's, it's fucked up, but that's the way it goes. So just keep an eye out for that as well because there's a lot of fucked up guys, a lot of weirdos, a lot of creeps. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Just watch out for little games that guys also try to play because yeah. plenty of us try to play those games and it's, it's fucked, but... Yeah, just watch out for that shit, too. It's the hard part, especially nowadays with dating apps and just everybody having an online presence, is that you put up this facade, and it is, it's a game. Mm -hmm. Dudes are doing it. Girls are doing it. Everybody's fucking doing it. Just trying to put on this mask to make you look better than you are so that you can get it in and then get to the next girl. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, it's, especially now that we're young, I, I mean, I don't know, it sounds like kind of, 
you know, cocky and shit like that. But I feel like you and I are pretty mature for our age group. I, th- I think it's safe to say that. Like, we have I, our moments. Yeah, of course we have. But I mean, we're still we're still young. We have to have our moments. But I <clears throat> have I have been shitty to girls. I have. I'll yeah, fucking admit course, it. Yeah. I have no problem admitting it. Uh-huh. But I'm better from it. You know, I learn from it. And I've had girls be shitty to me. And so it's like, yeah. you also, you just grow from everything if you just take it, <laughs> accept it, learn from it, move on. And um, yeah, you can definitely learn a lot from being shitty and from experiencing someone treating you shitty. Yeah, like, and I'm not going to say your name, but there was this one girl in high school that was, oh, can you walk me to class? Yeah, sure. And like, we would talk. Like, I can tell she wanted something more that I didn't want, though. And I honestly just wanted to fuck. Like, I straight up just wanted to smash. And I've had that, too. And I took her out for... Uh, she was like, oh, like... I'm like, oh, do you want to skip first and second period? Let's go have some coffee. She was like, okay, sick. I go take her out for some coffee. But I'm like, hey, I was like, I'm just going to put it straight, though. It was like two weeks that she was like, you know, talking to me. I was talking to her. But I didn't want a relationship. It was the end of senior year. And I was like, hey, look. I was like, you're really nice and all that stuff. And I just put it straight to her. It sounds so douchey. And trust me, it was douchey. I know it was douchey. And I was like... I just want to smash. I was like, I just, put oh, it, I put it straight. It's so funny because I did the exact same thing yeah. when I was a senior in high school. I was like super into this girl, <clears throat> yeah. super, super into her. And then it started to kind of fade and we were both moving away. And um, I was like, it's, I could tell it was starting to dwindle. And all my friends were telling me like, bro, she's a bitch. She doesn't care about you. When she did, Mm -hmm. we both cared about each other. And I just fucking gave in to what my friends were telling me. And I told her one day, I was like, honestly, I'm trying to smash. Like, where you at? Are you down or whatever? And then she was like, are you fucking kidding me? All the shit that we've been through and that's what you're going to say to me? And I was like, ooh. Yep. I fucked up bad. I fucked up bad with that one. Because she was a good girl. And see, for me, though, it sounds douchey, but... I like she she didn't talk to me at all ever again and now she has like a husband and all that shit which is good for like, her g- good on her yeah and um but I just wanted actually I literally just wanted sex that's all I wanted I was I was a virgin in, se- in senior year like I just wanted sex and uh she was like okay yeah can we leave I was like oh yeah sure quiet ass ride to the school uh I parked the car she gets out I get out never talk again literally just simple as that and I know it sounds douchey for me to say, but I I didn't feel bad because you know what? I put out my intentions. She didn't want that, clearly. But we ended mutually. Like, like she was like, okay, I, I just want to go. And I was like, all right, like, fair. And then, like, as she got out, I was like, oh, I'm sorry. She's like, it's okay. Like, thanks for being honest. And that's it. And, like, I, I don't know. I don't feel douchey because I did put my intention out there and I said what I wanted and she didn't want that. So then there it is. Like, I mean, I know it could be... It's it hard. Could come off, it could come off douchey, douchey but... Honestly, I was honest because I could have been a fuckboy and I could have been like, oh, let me take you on these dates and all that stuff. And then I smash and then I just don't talk to her. Or like I smash. And I'm like, hey, this isn't going to work out. I got to go to college. Like, I'm not going to do that to her. Like, <laughs> like, you know, it's a waste of both of our times. <coughs> like, and I don't know. It was, yeah, like I just put it straight and she was actually like okay with me being honest. So like, yeah. That's it, it, so, it, yeah, that is so relevant because i did the exact same thing and Mm -hmm. it's crazy because the girl i'm talking to right now is the girl that i did that to oh my god (laughs) not the not the hey i'm trying to fuck oh okay okay but after after that girl where i told her i was like yo i'm i'm trying to smash um after that was when i met this girl who i'm talking to now like i said we've known each other for a long time and then i was going to college and her and i were a thing and i i cared about her at the time and she, um, we took one of my friends up to college, and then I went to college like two weeks later. And on the ride home, after dropping him off, I was like, "So, I do like you, and like I, I, like I basically I tried to tell her, and I didn't communicate this very well at the time, but I tried to tell her I was like, I like you, and if you want to be my girlfriend, you got to speak up now because I'm going to college, and if we don't make this official right now, I mean." I'm going to college. You know yeah, what's you're happen. going to college. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like we both kind of had <laughs> mixed feel feelings better. on it, and then we were just confused, and I was confused, and then I went to college, and <laughs> you, know what, phase. you know, I think that's good though. I think that like you put that out there, and you guys are both like, well, you know, I just I don't know, 
and it just obviously didn't work out at the time. And I think that's a good thing because I don't know, it would have been hard for both of you guys. And you know what? Like, I think you guys obviously had time to like grow on your own and have your own experiences to where you learn from them. And then now you guys have changed in a way that you guys can now connect on. Like, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's true. And yeah. her and I, so yeah, that was right before college, the summer after senior year. And, um, we haven't really talked a whole lot since then. I've been in relationships. She's been in relationships. She's had shitty relationships. I've had shitty relationships. Good. I don't know. I think she's probably had some good relationships just like I did too. And now after not talking for so long and getting back together and like just getting to know each other again and see where we're at now, it's really cool. One of the other things that makes me attracted to her is that we have both grown in such similar ways and we've had some similar experiences to obviously everything. It's not just going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is the exact same thing that happened to me. <laughs> but we've definitely both had experiences that we've learned similar things from those experiences. And that is cool. It's almost like, yeah, I don't know. It worked out nicely. I don't know. Yeah, I, think I don't want to I don't want to talk too much about it. No, that's fair. Yeah, no, that's I mean, of course, privacy is key. privacy is yeah. what I'm going for. Um, But. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, there's this old stupid video that I have on my YouTube channel, uh, and it's like the title is Experiences Equal Change. And I, funnily enough, I watched it yesterday because yesterday I went through this like weird, like nostalgic feeling. So I was watching all these old YouTube videos that I made with a bunch of stupid gaming clips and shit. Huh. And uh, I sent some of them into the boys' chat. I don't know if you watched any of them. It was like a Fortnite one and like. I think I saw parts of them. I, yeah. I was fucking sleeping. I had work. Yeah. And then, so yeah, I was going through this weird nostalgic like feeling. And I watched this ep like this video that I made. It was like an essay about experiences and how they equal change. Because it was originally like a school project that we had to do. But I just spun it my whole way. And sh they were like, oh, how how is how has school been for you? Like, it was like, how has school impacted you? And how have you changed from it or whatever? Just some stupid broad question. And I made it, I spun this whole thing around and I made it to where it was based on experiences and how they equal change. And I pretty much said like, fuck school. And uh, like everything that I've done and everything that I have become is because I've experienced things the way I have and the way I've like learned from them is made me who I am. And um, yeah, and it pretty much, that's also, that connects straight to love. Like, what you experience in your past and also what you will experience makes you who you are. And especially in a relationship where you're both experiencing things together, but also you guys can interpret them in a completely different way. And then combining those thoughts and those experiences then make you guys move on or move forward or learn from those things. Like, I don't know. I think that's like incredibly important to like also be very vocal with what you feel about and how you have interpreted those certain events or I don't know, there's certain feelings that you feel or whatever. Like, Communication yeah, yeah. is what it is. That's another huge part of relationships. And I've had relationships that are we communicate well, and unfortunately those were some of the ones where I ha had to be like, I'm sorry, but like I just, like I'm not ready for something at this time in my life. And um, communication is hard because sometimes, yeah, you got to fucking, you got to break it to them. You got to be honest. Yeah. I think that's the best way to do it, though, I do. And I can't, We, I mean, both of us can't speak from, like, a girl's experience, but as a guy, like, growing up, I always, I, like, learned to kind of, like, going through what I went through as, like, a kid, I, like, learned to kind of bottle up a lot of, like, my feelings and, like, emotions, and I'm not trying to speak for any other guy, like, but, like, that's just how I felt, and when I think that's I think that's pretty common. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's that whole stereotype where guys have to bottle up their emotions and girls can do whatever they want when it comes to their emotions, but it's a stereotype. So it's I'm a stereotype. Not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not saying that's what you guys yeah. feel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but, uh, like, yeah, and personally, that's how I felt. Like, I, like, especially getting into a relationship, like, there were certain things where, like, I wouldn't say anything, and, or I wouldn't say how, like, I felt about it, but, you know, one year later, like, I am way better than I was, like, first starting, like, I'm a lot more vocal about things. And sure, I still have hiccups here and there. I mean, we always will. That's, Nobody's perfect. Yeah, that's how it works. But recently, I've been trying, like, within the last couple of months, I've been trying way harder to, like, let Crystal know, like, oh, this is how I'm feeling about this, like, this and this. And, like, there's been times even where, like, um, I don't want to get too deep. Yeah, I won't get, get into that. But there's, yeah, there's been, you know, hiccups that I think everybody will go through and everybody might have gone through to where you kind of like second guess how you're feeling about certain things 
And then and, sometimes um, you can upset them. Yeah, exactly. And because it's kind of one of those things where, yeah. like, all right, we're going to work through this. Yeah. Or, fuck, I don't, like, I don't know, that might be a deal breaker. It, exactly, it yeah. But the biggest thing that I learned was when I was feeling certain ways about certain situations or whatever, just explaining how I felt about it, like I felt about it, it made it 10 times better because then she was able to approach the situation differently. Or I tell her about how I'm feeling and then she takes that into account to where I then feel more comfortable into saying more things like, yeah, yeah. you have to, yeah. you have to express yourself because I mean, nobody's a mind reader. You have, if you have yeah. something that you need to get out, <laughs> you have to tell them and it's, it's hard sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, and it's gone on both sides. So like, and this isn't, yeah. this isn't even just like a romantic relationships, um, like Friendships exclusively yeah. to it. God damn it. I wish I could speak. Not exclusive. It's yeah. not exclusive to, yeah. uh, romantic relationships it happens with your friends happens with your fucking parents your siblings your aunt uncle anybody in your life you can have those kind of moments with yeah but the best thing to do is just let them know how you're feeling and then you guys can work through it in that kind of way yep but it's i huge. mean yeah it's that's honestly that is probably the best advice that we have talked about on the entire episode no but it's it's so i mean everybody always says communication is key but it is though like it's I don't know, it opens up so many doors to, like, your own brain that you wouldn't think you could have opened, and you allow people to see, oh, God, this is how they're feeling, or, oh, they're being kind of vulnerable with me right now, like, how should I feel about this? And that just, that that takes things way deeper and way more mature in ways, too. Like, Super mature. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's worth it. it. It's none of that puppy shit anymore like you are in high school, like, oh... Can you go tell her that I don't like her anymore? Like, ah. tell her yourself. Or hey, it, pass this, pass this note to her. Yeah, pass, it, it literally pass doesn't it down, down, pass it down, pass it down. Yeah, I remember doing yeah. that shit when yeah, I was it, little. It, it goes back to that whole grade school shit where you have to just say what you're feeling. You can't be a kid about things anymore. You have to just say how you're feeling about things. You yeah, it's maturity. You can't hide it. Yeah, and it's a cliche. There's so, so, so <laughs> many cliches around dating. And it's really hard to understand them until you've lived it. And it really, the only way you're going to get there is through trial and error. Yeah. Communication and is one of those things. Probably the biggest thing, in my opinion. Yeah. No, for sure. It's it, it, it makes or breaks relationships, for sure. Like, if there were certain situations where I didn't speak up, things might not be the way they are now. Or if there's certain situations where she didn't speak up, we might not be where we are now. Like, it goes both ways. Like, you both have to, you know, dip your foot and dip, dip your feet into the pool See how the water is, and then when you guys are both ready, just dive in type shit. Like, yep. That's that's the best way I can. It's a good analogy. Yeah, that's the best way I can think about it. Yeah. What a good episode. Yeah, love is fucked, pretty much. Love is fucked. But it's also Maybe that's what I should title this. Yeah, love was, is fucked and amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like beautiful chaos. I don't know. It's weird. It's yeah. this whole melting pot of, like, shit and piss and, like, hearts. Cum. Lots yeah. of cum. <laughs> <laughs> Piss shit and gum. Piss shit and gum. Yeah. I saw this funny ass bumper sticker yesterday. It was like a on a truck, and it was like born a, born a, born to shit, forced to wipe or something like that. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> God tier shit. God tier shit. Yeah, dude, that's true. Life gets shitty sometimes. Yeah. You gotta wipe it. Yeah. Born to shit, forced to wipe, dude. No, shit. forced to shit. Born to shit, forced to wipe, right? Yeah, there you go, yeah. I remember seeing the picture you sent of the group yeah. chat. I thought that was quitting for some reason, but it must have been you. It was me. That's funny. Ugh. Yeah, dude, I think that we touched on a lot of really great stuff this episode. I don't really have a whole lot more to say about relationships because I'm still trying to figure it out. And there will be more of these episodes to come, I guarantee it, as we grow because the podcast ain't going anywhere, y'all. So uh, stick around. Yeah, Hit the subscribe week, button. We're going to talk about Wesley's uh, sex party. Yeah, dude, I'm going to a sex party <laughs> this weekend. No, not really. <laughs> but I have been going downtown a lot, and that shit is so fun. Now that I'm 21. I got to go. Dude, you have to come go. with us one of these nights. I'm sad that Crystal can't come, but as soon as she is able to come, bro, yeah, we're going to yeah. party. I, I think my first time I want to go with the boys, though. Boys only type beat. I'm down for that, yeah, dog. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. Uh, I've just been I'm not a dancer But I have been Dancing Dancing Hell yeah Dancing I think everybody's a dancer It's just whether or not You care about people judging you That's what it is yeah. bro That's yeah. Oh my god That's totally what it is We went one night With uh, the girl I'm talking to And her homegirls 
one of my best friends, Fletcher. He's been on that or on the podcast before. Go check out that episode if you want. We get deep. We talk about drugs and other crazy yeah, shit in that episode. Yeah. It's a fun one. And um, yeah, we were all out and we went to the last bar of the night. It's called Humpin' Hannah's. Um, that was the last bar we went to that night, and um, it was probably at one thirty. The bars close at two, so there wasn't much time left. And everybody in there was just like doing like a chill little jig, you know. They're just like getting down, and then some kid Cuddy comes on, and bro, we just start turning up. We're like fucking jumping and just like yeah, going just crazy. It, yeah. Everybody else is just like chilling, and we're in there fucking raging. Yeah, that's fucking sick though. That's 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 fun shit right there. It was yeah. so much fun, so 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 much fun, and I'm gonna keep doing it because now is the season in my life to do that shit and yes, sir yeah i've been having a good time doing it i hope y'all are getting out and doing fun shit too because it's summertime baby it is summertime summer summertime i wish i could sing but i can't because my voice is all <laughs> scraggly yeah it's easy to get caught up in you know life shit but also don't forget to take your your mental breaks and your life breaks and just go outside go to the lake go on a walk play frisbee with your dog do anything like just enjoy that sun bathe in that fucking vitamin c or whatever d yeah. yes is it D? Sunny D. That's how I always remember it. Vitamin D. Sunny I remember, D. I felt like I remember told, I told somebody to get that vitamin D. Like, actually, it's C. Uh, I could be retarded. Actually, more I than th- likely. I think it's vitamin C. I, I Hold on. Do we need I, to do I a, need to a look quick little up. research? Yeah, I need to look it up. Cover our asses. Yeah, because I actually, Somebody's in the comments right now. You fucking idiots. It's fucking vitamin A. No, it's not. Yeah, for real. <laughs> vitamin that you get. From the sun. From the sun. I've been bathing in the sun lately. I've been getting sunburned, but I'm starting to get a nice little tan going. I'm feeling good. I have these really, really sick racing stripes from getting sunburned. Check it out. Oh, yeah. You like that? I'm fucking fast <laughs> as fuck, dude. You don't even know. That you get from the sun. Let's see it. It is D. Hey! It is D, yeah. Get fucked. It nah, is D. I'm just kidding. Damn. I need to get some more of that D in me. Dude, oh, dude. I'll help you out, oh, baby. Lego. Lego. <laughs> Well, you have anything else to add? No, I'm all good. I'm all potted out. That I'm was gonna, a very constructive podcast. Dude, I think it a lot was. Of take that a was, lot away from it. Man, we say this shit is therapy. It fucking is, yeah, dog. It is. it is. It really is. I was watching yeah. a podcast not too long ago, and they were like, men don't go to therapy. Men just start a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, that shit's kind of true. Fair enough. Fair that shit enough. is kind of true. But, um, yeah, it's I hope different. you guys enjoyed the episode this week. Um, yeah, I think... We had a, a fucking amazing conversation. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys can take something away from it. Um, I also hope you guys are doing well and you guys are enjoying your summer. Like I said, subscribe. If you're on Spotify or Apple, come over. Subscribe to the YouTube, baby. We're here. Almost all my, to 100. Almost to 100. Let's I get mean, it done. It ain't shit, but I'm fucking proud of us, dude. Oh, yeah. 100's the hardest one to get to, so. Yeah, dude. It's We're only fucking going up from here, so. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah. Great episode. Yep. Be there next week. We'll try to have a guest on, hopefully, because... Yeah. We and we'll to. also... Damn it, Carlos. We need to commit to Sundays again. Yeah. We have to. I mean, I have Sundays now off. Now that you have now. Sundays off, yeah. we have to. Yes. Okay? Yeah. We have to. Yes. Next week, to. we will talk about hopping back on our grind, Carlos's new job, all that good stuff. And, um, yeah, just continuing the grind. That's really all I got for y'all. I love you. And I will see you next week. Few Dudes Fridays. You already know. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah.